In the last two days, we've seen a remarkable development. We have seen big tech. We've seen Twitter and Facebook actively interfering in this election in a way that has no precedent in the history of our country. Yesterday, the New York Post broke a story alleging serious corruption of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden concerning Ukraine. The allegations in the New York Post story, if true, indicate that Vice President Biden lied when he said he had never discussed his son's business dealings. That story, once the New York Post broke it, was blocked by Twitter and Facebook. Anyone who attempted to share it was prevented from sharing it on Twitter or Facebook. The New York Post itself, when it attempted to put out its story, was blocked on Twitter and Facebook. The New York Post has the fourth largest circulation of any newspaper in this country. This is election interference, and we are 19 days out from an election. It has no precedent in the history of democracy. The Senate Judiciary Committee wants to know what the hell is going on. Chairman Lindsey Graham and I have discussed this at length, and the committee today will be noticing a markup on Tuesday to issue a subpoena to Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee next Friday to come before this committee and the American people and explain why Twitter is abusing their corporate power to silence the press and to cover up allegations of corruption. And let me be clear, I don't know if these New York Post stories are true or not. Those are questions Vice President Biden should answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to finally have an accounting that's long overdue. These social media platforms have a dominance in our lives. Their newspapers, uh, their TV stations, their radio stations, their publishers. And this, to me, crystallizes the problem better than anything I could think of for the American people. Senator Cruz, I think taking this action is absolutely necessary. Last night, the subcommittee, my subcommittee on crime and terrorism, invited both Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg to come and testify. I think a subpoena from the Judiciary Committee is absolutely appropriate and in order. It is absolutely vital. We believe in a free press in this country. We also believe in free elections and the attempt to rig an election which is what we are seeing here by monopolies, is unprecedented in American history. They have a lot to answer for, and I hope that we'll subpoena both Twitter and Facebook. They should both come. They're both engaged in censorship. They're both massive monopolies. They should answer to the Judiciary Committee. They should answer for the, to the full Senate. They should answer to the American people, and that's what this is about, and I look forward to taking this vote and hearing their testimony to the committee. So it is imperative that our information channels are open and Americans can access stories by the press and from their own social circles. Congress believed in this power of information so much they created special liability protections for information platforms, such as technology companies like Facebook, Twitter, and Google. It is called Section 230. And I have believed in the principles outlined in the law. But it is clear that Section 230 in its current form is no longer working. Just last week, Justice Clarence Thomas said the courts have read sweeping new protections into 230 that Congress never put into statute. It is time to scrap the law and start over. Yesterday, the New York Post, one of the country's largest newspapers, published a piece on Hunter Biden and his work on the board of Ukrainian energy company, Burisma, which he had no qualifications for. It is an important story, as most Americans would be appalled by the vice president's son using his father's position to earn an enormous contract from foreign companies. But the response from many in the media and Twitter and Facebook bring to light an even bigger concern. The biggest social networks are selectively censoring information. 
If you are a citizen and posted information in the story, your account was locked. Last night, the Republican House Judiciary Committee posted the story on their website, a government website. And this morning, Twitter has censored it. Did big tech censor the media and Americans when they posted about the unverified and later debunked steel dossier? Did big tech censor the media and Americans when they posted about Trump's taxes, which were, of course, obtained illegally? Did big tech censor the world's largest sponsor of terrorism, the supreme leader of Iran? The answer to all three questions is no. 